what's an AA do to like contest your jungle? He runs in and he's like, ah, I got you. Cold feet. Like, you don't fucking care about an AA. Like, it doesn't stop Alk from doing the gold farming thing. And then you farm so many items, you get ice blasted. And it's like, okay, bro. Like, what is this a tickle fight? Like, you want me to come tickle you? And then you poke him and he dies. He just falls over. Right? Like, okay. So normally I would agree to a certain extent because, again, I don't like AA as a support in general, but Maledict is really good. If you can stop healing, because healing is the biggest counter to Maledict with Enchantress and Alk's ult. So if you have AA, like the AA is there. It's not to contest him because you can't anymore. <laughs> it's it's to kill him when you're actually able to fight. You know, because what if he just jungles? What are you though? killing like, him with? That's my question. Like, what what if Alk just doesn't fight, just jungles, just like fight some the, smokes, you know? gentlemen? I don't know. Like, okay, let's let's see what they end up drafting. You tell me if they can kill Alchemist. Okay. okay. Also, you do have to land the ice blast. What if you miss that one ice blast? Then you got that hero for nothing. Nothing. Well, you got the setup with Tide Ravage, AA yep. mid incoming gentleman. Looking forward to it. You get that I'm shard. You push out waves. Um, you know. Ursa is not banned yet. Maybe uh, could yeah. be picked up. Good against good, good against Edge. But and uh, and DP as well. Like you need to burst her before she gets gets her stuff off. Jump over the tusk shards as well. It's actually a really good Ursa game. Oh, yep. There's Ursa. Weaver. There it is. <laughs> Classic Ursa. This actually was a god tier Ursa game, though. That's true. It's a good, I mean, it, it, it's a good Weaver pick for similar reasons. He's got the, you know, the double hit. It's not as much like burst damage as an Ursa, but it's it's more mobile. Like, these two supports, in fact, like, all of these heroes, minus, like, the Alk when he gets some later items, all of these heroes have, like, nothing to disable Weaver. He's just, you know, running around hasted. Can't do anything about it. I mean, I feel like at if this is your position one versus the Alk, you need so many items to be able to contest. You know what I this mean? This is true. This is true. Like I, I don't know if this is going to be enough, but we'll see what their last pick ends up being. So likely going to be their mid, um, if unless they go for the AA shenanigans and they put Marana somewhere as a core. But highly doubtful, sadly. Ross is still there, gentlemen. <laughs> Rasta. <laughs> that old Rasta mid lane could come out. They did nerf the shard, though, sadly. And they're really, they, you know, unusual for Quincy to hold out their mid lane matchup for so long. I wonder if that's like a nod of respect for DNM at all or or not. But, you know, it means we might right, see something a bit new. You could see DP mid. That's her original role from back in the day. Alchemist as well, technically, although that doesn't really seem like much of a Quincy hero, but, or a Quinn hero. I keep saying Quincy for Quinn. I mean, the team is named after him, I'm sure. So. Or it's just a coincidence. It's a coincidence. <laughs> coincidence. Coincidence. I like that. So Ursa surely is going to get banned here, right? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, from, from Quincy, you mean? Yeah. Ooh. Nah, I, uh, they banned uh, Underlord there, by the way. So they're anticipating that there's still an off lane to come and that, yeah, the DP could be slated for mid. You know, that is true. I mean, Lelis doesn't exactly play DP. I mean, I'm sure he can, but it's not really a Lelis hero. Like, he plays these frontlining, like, beefy boys, these, like, map control, stand in front of you heroes, like Beast and Underlord, and, and Quinn does play DP, so... that That is one thing with this Quincy lineup, is that they... They don't really flex that much, to be honest. Like, they just pick a really well-rounded draft and just say, okay, counter us, who cares? Like, our draft is so well-rounded that it doesn't matter. So it's interesting that they're the best team in the region drafting like yeah, that. I wonder everybody else flexes. If they go to the major, if that's going to end up hurting them, not flexing. Or if this is just a long play and they can flex, they just don't want to yet because they don't respect anybody in this region, including EG. Yeah, I mean, we heard what he, Quinn said before this match, so that's cl clearly the case. Very disrespectful. That's what you heard. Show up for the interview, the for God's sake. All right, and now they go for a, for a Queen of Pain ban. So mm -hmm. Underlord ban, then Queen of Pain ban. So maybe they're a bit unsure, and they just know that they don't want to deal with these particular heroes. Yeah, root, I mean, Viper obviously. obviously makes sense because of the break. Uh, yeah, the root, very annoying for Weaver in general. So and it's funny that you ban Quap. It's like, that means you're out of mid here. <laughs> Quap is always like that last resort. Like, eh, yeah. 
Well, what, I mean, mobile, eh. storms out there, and there's not even much to stop a storm on the That's side of true. Sad Boys, you know? Coconut's I, not trusty, I mean, Arrow's not trusty. You don't want to ravage for a storm. I, okay, yeah, they do go for take the storm. It. They'll oh, take sure. it themselves, yeah. What does it leave for Quinn now? You got no Ember, you got no Void, Storm. I don't think Quinn's playing Earth Spirit, man. You know, and Bat Riders nerfed, or banned anyways. Oh, Quinn, what's left for Quinn? What has he played? I, I feel like it's probably a Lelis hero that oh, they yeah? need. I just, I, my gut says, like, I don't see Lelis playing much Death Prophet, but we'll see. Let's see. Do we have the like, offlane? Mars is garbage. Mars, yeah. I mean, you know, Mars, I think you can I think, zip out, you can leap out. Wait, can you leap out? Well, okay. It, it would be nice to have something to pair with the tusk, and Death Prophet actually does do that really nicely in lane. Because, you know, it's a ranged hero with really, really good uh, right clicks. So True. Yes. Okay, Quinn, tiny mid. Cool. Yes. A tiny mid okay. pulled out against EG, of course. Love it. Absolutely. Guys, I got inspired last night in my very high-level pub, 5K MMR. Tiny mid. I, I got 20 kills. It's it's a good hero mid, gentlemen. Nobody knows what the... Like, I was looking at the Dota Plus, the comparisons. It's all, like, support numbers. So I felt really good about my numbers compared to everything else. So, Quincy Crew, easy game, gentlemen. Easy. Jenkins? I like the tiny. I think there's, like, four heroes on Sad Boys that are all one-hittable with combo. Uh, Moo's the only one that isn't. So, yeah, I'm going to go Quincy. All right. Sounds good. Panel, why don't we go ahead and throw it into a break? But when we come back, we've got none other than Trent and the well-warmed-up-and-ready Lyrical bringing you the coverage. Dota friends, we are here. Game oh, number one. We gotta, go. we gotta Stop. go. Get Stop in. Talking. Get in the game. We gotta go quickly. <laughs> oh, first blood just happened. Fear took down Quinn. It was a five-man smoke up. Hello, everybody. Uh, hey. Welcome. <laughs> Trent just starts screaming. Panic. For good reason. For good yeah. reason. Well, you know, I, I thought I could freak out Mike a little bit there. Oh, so what did he do it? Oh, is Fear in trouble? He's gotta get pushed out of here, actually. So again, uh, welcome to the game. Sad boys facing off against Quincy Crew. Sad boys make a very aggressive early move forward. Fear, no more Sakuchi. Fear gonna drop. His test of his team left him up there. That's not the way it's supposed to go. All right, well, at least we're uh, one for one now. We get to mid down, carry down. Uh, yeah, so first off, I'm excited because it's mid tiny. I have been doing uh, mostly the, uh, the SA region. I get to come hang with NA on my off days. But uh, we get a lot of four and mid tiny down there, and I'm hmm. not really seeing it anywhere else. To th the support tiny, not so hot, I gotta say. Not a huge fan, personally. Uh, feels like the changes to toss are brutal, with the cast range being so low early. But uh, mid tiny feels very similar to his old self. Right, and I think that, I mean, at least for us, we haven't been seeing tiny anywhere else except for mid, just because, as you said, support tiny is, like, so garbo right now. Uh, that, <laughs> it stinks. <laughs> yeah, people just don't want to do it, so it makes sense. Uh, yeah. But there are some interesting things going on with it. I think we saw Quinn do it the other day in the game against Evil Geniuses, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, that series was just so wild in general that some of it escapes my memory. Uh, but we'll see this face off against DNM. And as we saw in that short little piece, uh, the breakdown, DNM felt like, you know what? If we can win the mid, if I can have a good game, uh, it should be easy. He said the words easy. Uh, it, Dare spoke well, them against Leslau. Right, it's exactly. Okay. That's fair. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it'd be okay if he said these guys are garbage. You know, that would have been fine too. But he didn't say that. Um, I think it was uh, TI8 in Vancouver that Tiny was like popping off because Weaver was like meta. So every game was just this story of like Tiny and Weaver. And uh, now we're back to that right here. And that's not a mid hero that Weaver likes to see in the game, right? It just absolutely blows you up with a combo before you have a chance to time lapse. So we'll have to see if Fear's build kind of takes that into account. Right now, he's eyeing up that Falcon Blade for a little bit of HP. Uh, that item is, uh, I don't know how I feel about that item. It, it kind of makes sense in this scenario. I think it's uh, definitely not an every game item. But it's like, for what you get compared to just buying some fluffy hats, it can feel a little rough. Well, and sometimes I just think about it compared to like raindrops or something too, even like getting raindrops will sometimes be enough to take you over the edge. And yeah, you get like the mana regen stuff. And I guess that's something that Weaver wants naturally anyways. Like if he's not going Lincolns, that seems pretty fine to me. Um, but we'll see what Fear ends up going for. Certainly uh, well experienced on each one of these heroes, although he did die at the first blood. 
put that on Steam. So Although, be, I mean. Fear, he actually might be in trouble now. MSS is running him down. Ooh, forced to use that coconut. PPD keeps him alive as LOA dies top. <laughs> oh, there we go. Pressure in the other lane. Yeah, pretty uh, scary oh, dual off lane, I guess, right? Marana, Tide, like they can definitely commit onto a uh, support pretty hard. Like gosh into arrow potentially, or just uh, fiending you with the right clicks. I mean, look at your ward. Just getting pelted over and over by snaking. At least there's not a uh, an orb or something here, like a Blightstone. Hmm. Yeah, that could be really annoying to deal with. Uh, and I mean, he's not careful. I guess LOA is going to need to sort of make some more moves now that he's got impetus up before he had just taken enchant and that camp got blocked out. So, bit of an issue there too. Ah, yeah, that kind of explains it. Well, nonetheless, uh, three Lane minutes hole. in. Oh, oh. He's good, he's good. Quinn, right, OTNM, good. you're in trouble. Throws the tree, is it enough? Toss afterwards, oh my goodness, that was close. That was so he's close. Thanks to the range creep. Yeah, right? Yeah, he's good, he's good. Uh, and he might be back in time for the four minute uh, rune as well, by the looks of it. Ah, uh, maybe not, it'll be close. I so, uh, I actually saw the same lane last night, I think it was, uh, of the Tuscan to Death Prophet. And it, it was kind of cool because one of the neat things about Tag Team is that uh, it doesn't matter, like, where you are, right? Um, it's just about, like, where the debuff is. So, like, as the Death Prophet, like, ranged heroes still work with Tag Team. You think of these, like, hit modifiers usually are reduced when it comes to ranged heroes in a lot of circumstances. Right. But uh, it's uh, it's a really good combo overall because you're right-clicking DP, you're soul siphoning. There's going to be a shard block, too. So... They, they work very well in tandem together as DNM does get back for four minutes, but bullied out by Quinn, and that's a haste rune for the tiny now. I oh, mean, DNM, you are supporting. Oh, yeah. Snaking up top, getting really low, and LOA able to get that kill. So, yeah, they had MSS that was rotating to get the other one also, just in case. Yeah, DNM's definitely going to die before six, though, right? Oh, well, here it comes. Ah, that's just, just for last. It's okay. He's chilling. Boss back. Okay, and DNM staying in the creep wave, trying to stay survivable, gets the pull off. This could be big. Quinn needs to go back in for the punch and will make it happen. MSS ensuring the kill with those good shards. He's been doing really good on this Tusk. Yeah, he was, uh, I think, maybe a little slight miscommunication in terms of like, how close he could be, but he might have just had to be playing outside of the vision. They might have known there was a ward nearby. So mm. either way, got the kill before level six, as you would hope with a haste rune as a tiny. So Quinn already back on the horse after uh, being the first blood. And MSS just heads right back down. Bomb for the five-minute rune. Oh, the timing. Well, able to not quite get it, though. Fear gets the one. And MSS now in some trouble. Decides to turn on a PPD. Ensure that kill. Snowball dodges some of the Maledic damage. And he doesn't have that much left. Had a salve, but no way to get away from it. So, final tally, I think, ends up being three bounties for uh, Sad Boys, if I'm not mistaken with one more still to go, get picked up hypothetically up on that uh, radiant yeah, that's right. triangle. Oh. Man, looks like that won't amount to much there from Leslo. Kind of pops off an urn charge there at fear, but uh, the south immediately from the return of PPD. Yeah, brothers in arms here. So you said you liked the, uh, the DP Tusk lane. Uh, have you been seeing a whole heck of a lot of just DP off lane in general recently? Uh, more so in Europe, I, I, not so much in SA. But uh, I mean, overall, I like the pick just because of the flexibility out of the first phase. That, that's why I see a lot of teams go for it, right? We, we've seen like the five DP is, uh, that's a combo hero. That's for sure. Wow. Quick and easy. Yeah, just the, I guess, making use of that ulti as a support oh, yeah. or whatever and one time with all our tiny is one time gareth misspoke and he was casting he called it the tombo nice. so now we all call it the tombo to make fun of us that's amazing so, i love yeah, that i want to go into your games and talk about the tombos don't worry it's uh it's the classy thing to do these days is tiny it should definitely be the thing yeah it mm -hmm. sounds like somebody with a martini glass or whatever you know just getting their combo together he's uh i'm sure Ooh. he'd be a great barkeep you know Up everything top. on the rocks <laughs> That God's terrible. Uh, you are getting shoved that right there and is going to get killed by Moo. Just a random arrow thrown in there from Snake King. Well played. Hey, Lyrical, this Alchemist isn't having a very good time. No. I think this hero is supposed to kind of start decently well here. They got to make some space in other lanes. Oh, DNM went in. LOA was waiting for him the whole time. There was another impetus shot. That one's off the mark, but he's still kind of going in there with LOA with the tornado. 
TNM. He's lucky that he didn't keep chasing. That was. Yeah. I, I think he saw the bottle charges, so he didn't want to get baited in. So, probably the mm. smart call in the end from LOA. It's like, you know what? Kills are great, but walking home, that's pretty bad, too. How many times has DNM had to do that? I don't know. Check his pedometer, maybe. Maybe he's just getting in his steps for the day. You know, Storm, he's slimmed down a lot that's over true. the years. How do you think he does it? You're not Once wrong. Once they got rid of that bottle crow, it was it was time. Toughing it. Yeah, uh, you are definitely getting bullied back in lane a lot. You can see now as well that Marana is rotating in, trying to mess with them in his jungle, because uh, we did see the SVG stack up that was going on earlier. And Quinn makes the rotation, tries to find Snake King, won't be able to connect. At least with the full combo. Snake King TP's out. And looks like he's away. Yeah, but. not enough damage with the tree, so I'm just going to hold on to it. So, uh, most successful games I've seen versus Alchemist, as Moo is getting bullet away with the, uh, the impetus there, uh, has been this ability to cross the river and never go home, pretty much, right, as Sad Boys. Like, this idea of, like, trying to stay aggressive and really deny out that space, getting a lot of vision in that whole big area while Alchemist is trying to play Alchemist stuff. And that's usually from, like, nine ish to like 15 minutes you, you just want to be like hyper vigilant and uh, and bully him and i don't know if they really have the best heroes for it this game despite the fact that it was uh, picked so early right his lane was very poor that's already a good start but you know that's not the main issue with alc right the problem is this phase of the game mm. yeah i could see that and i guess that maybe that's again why you take a hero like tidehunter to try and come and contest Yo, those Quinn? stacks that you know oh, are going to be Quinn, there is Quinn, Quinn. Back behind enemy lines. Arrow not going to connect, though. And the toss back, he might be able to get out of this one with the raindrops. He's just running away. Cool as a cucumber. Wow, Snowball. Down top lane. They catch Moo there. And he is going to drop. At Tusk, one of the better heroes at being able to take down that tide with you, you know, boosting, boosting up tag team and the shards block off that Kraken Chalice doesn't do anything for. only has one leap here. Oh, he came back down. There's there's allies here. Yeah, and another round of shards back up again in a second. Dude, MSS has just been everywhere this game on this Tusk. Oh my god, that is so much damage already for a five from LOA. Yeah. And you can see the pressure that Quincy Crew are taking. Like, the laning stage is completely falling apart. You've got basically four heroes in the mid area for Quincy Crew, and Mu has to walk forward and just be a ravage threat in front of all of them. But they're going to head up and instead take over the jungle with this exorcism. Man, Ambitus is a crazy amount of damage. Pure damage. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just pure damage, right? Like, it, uh, it catches you off guard. Right. Oh, yeah, it's weird like that. Oh, no. The bounties. No, you were. Oh, he knew he couldn't go for it. That was, that was pretty smart of him not to even try because they definitely would have ravaged him on that bounty rune. Yeah. That would have been a, a hashtag worth for sure. This is the weirdest thing. Fear and Yawar, both safe laners, fighting over one jungle camp. Like, this, this is either... how you do it, though. This is exactly this what I'm talking cool. about. Yeah, get him out of here. Don't don't care about your lane. Let the Marana farm your lane. You just stop this guy. You stop this guy, their game's gonna be bad. Look at what Fear's doing. He's just literally chasing him around the map. Like, is the position one? <laughs> the okie doke. He's going back in. Oh, ankles broken. He's got six ankles, and they're all shattered. Look at Fear. He's lost. Where'd he Where'd go? He go? Where'd he go? <laughs> He's back down bottom. All right. Snaking's trying to pressure there. Very oh, weird game. Courier. It, it kind of ended up being worse. Oh, Fear. You know, he's, now he's all chatting when he sees him down there. I like it. Catch on to LOA. Rotation coming in afterwards, a TP from MSS. They stop the pressure and Quinn catches Fear in the mid, takes him down, LOA will die to that Maledict, but the shards will connect onto PPD. And with Quinn there in tow, giving him a big old hug for the Salt Lord himself, they're gonna take down the Sad Boys captain. Double kill for Quinn. All right, we'll take that trade. And double Ocean Hearts pop out at the same time here. Okay, not bad. I noticed there was a Fairy Trinket for uh, Yuar but uh, none found by uh, by the Radiant yet. So DNM really, really hoping that last one's gonna be for him. That would be very nice for sure. Just one of the absolute best items you can get on this hero. I think that we saw one where it was like tier four items were coming out and the storm was still holding on to the fairy trinket. Yes, <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> what the hell? A slough? 
Thinking about a Ravage here, maybe? They get the Silence out onto all of them. Tries to back away. Anchor Smash sticks popped. Diving in even deeper. They have the Spirit Siphon, though, onto both of them. And that's going to maybe be enough to force them back. Moose still thinking, thinking about, about going it. in. Oh, and that should be enough to kill off Leslau. MSS makes the move over himself. Shards catches move, but he doesn't have backup here. Quinn has blink now. Enough. This is the reveal. I mean, yeah, he in. wants someone bigger than Marana. Oh, the Ravage. Oh, he didn't go for it. Oh. I thought he was going to with so many heroes. Well, he uh, did I mean, not. Five he... heroes should be. Oh, Snowball save. It caught him away from the arrow. DNM doesn't have much mana now. They still can probably get this kill on a Quint, although he does have an Illusion Rune. Witch Doctor ulti drops down. MSS tries to play cleanup. Where's the rest of the team? They take down what? the storm. Oh, my God. And now, Leslau's running tower? after him. I, I guess that's what it must have been. I'm not yeah, sure what he, he did. Guys he died do. to tower. Damn. Wow, that got really complicated very, very quickly. I mean, they got to save Ravage on the one hand, but it cost them two heroes in the end because of it. A little crazy. Well, and Mu too. I mean, Mu died also, so it's the third there. I mean, he probably would have died regardless, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he dies anyway, but uh, all right. Well, that means you are still just farming the entire time while a couple heroes go down. A couple core heroes, in fact, on the side of Sad Boys. And uh, now he's starting to accrue that lead that you're hoping for. And the best part is that the hero directly after him is also an Alchemist team. Right. Because it's still Quinn there on the tiny. Interesting. So. You war is going for the Radiance. What do you think about that? Yeah, Radiance or Battle Fury, right? Um, yeah. that, that's kind of your, your big question. I, I'm generally okay with either, still. Okay. I think there's no Radiance counters this game. No copies or anything. Quinn gets hit by the Maledict again. Snowball not able to catch that tiny, but they blow up the storm again. MSS gets the one big punch onto DNM, finds the kill. MSS will pay for it, but again, he's been involved so much in this game. Yeah, the crazy thing is it's Lesla who has the medallion, right? Like, yeah, you would think that with these big blow ups, the MSS is popping the heat or something, but uh, it's actually medallion, urn, and I believe bots are done right now for Lesla. So the three cores on Quinty Crew are extremely firm. They are killing it. Uh, yeah, definitely having a good game so far on Quincy Crew. DNM, he's died three times, but he's still, you know, his net worth is not doing great. Storm Spirit, if we're going to be honest right now. Uh, yeah. It's mainly Moo that's been having a pretty solid game, it feels like. Just some free time to farm up and get into those survivability items. But he's still dying because a lot of the damage is physical. You know what I really like about this Radiance build is that uh, the Storm is relying so much on like right click damage, right? Throughout the game. Doesn't right. really want to get his BKB that early. He probably wants to play a little bit greedy because it's not the best control because it's like a late pick Storm. So that's one of the reasons you rely on his Moo. Stunned up. Hot. Yet again and kill. This four heroes ran mid. A fifth one's over by the Roche Pit. Uh, they do get the medallion now, which was I think is super needed for that tide. Like they they need armor. Safety uh, ulti there from Yawar just in case. He stuns himself. Some vision's gonna catch them, but uh, yeah, Leslie's onto it. He's like, guys, I think there's a ward up there. Can I get some vision, please? Courier's on its way to help out. All right. Well. Game starting to accelerate a little bit. If there is one bright spot, I would say for Sad Boys, it's that Snake King's gotten some pretty good farm for himself. Oh, wait a minute. Snowball in, catches DNM yet again. That silence is devastating. Level one, throw. three seconds, too. Like, what? That's nice. Yeah. Uh, and this orchid that Storm's going for, I mean, it's going to be done soon, but we're seeing the. The, the devastating side of it is, you know, you don't have anything to save you. And there's basically no save on his team either. Yeah, and uh, if he's going to, like, fall in with Orchid, oh, you are. That's the Radiance. Should be fine here. Oh, fear. Forced to time lapse. MSS nearby again. Pop the dust. Back away. Yeah, I think uh, zipping in is going to be really rough, too. Because, like, you might want to target the Tusk because he is the save on the Snowball, but then there's going to be the Silence instantly from the DP. And then you also have to just be watching where Quinn's going to blink and jump on you. So the uh, the hunting for Storm has to be pretty isolated heroes. As the smoke pops on MSS, you know, trying to, yeah. yeah that was a, the good path to take because he probably thought where the Shards would go. But in the end, there's a blinking Tiny, so it doesn't matter. Right. Fear knows there's no spells, so he's going to reveal himself. Oh, Quinn MSS. tried to get pretty sneaky here. I mean, they still have heroes nearby on Quincy Crew, though. They're trying to lull them in, it looks like. But Quinn backing away, still taking a lot of damage there. They have the snowball save if they want to use it. Backs out. Yawar charges up the stun. 
He's just going to take that one himself. All right, so Tide's a great hero to like plant in front of towers like this, but generally you want to be the only one here, you know? This, this right. is a bad case scenario. Where now Moose like, all right, well, that impetus shreds me. I don't really want to be seen. <laughs> uh, yeah. They have a ward back here spotting DNM. I don't think they caught that smoke, so this might end up working out for them if Quinn tries to gank the Storm Spirit. Doesn't it's, seem to be the plan, though. It's, it's really impressive seeing Quincy crew just make these moves. Like... Uh, it feels like Quinn and MSS have just been the ones getting this like engine of death going constantly. Like 13 and 14 kills or assists between them uh, out of the 16 kills. They've just been involved in all of them. And you know, you take a look back mid, Sad Boy's gonna try and get some counter pressure going right here. Uh, they definitely need it. It's 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 feeling a little bit rough. At least Weaver's still having a, a, an okay, decent game, but he's getting close to getting doubled up right now on net worth by the Elf. Bot's gone already, though, so they, they have no pawns for just showing up for this defense. No. Another self stun. Jeez, this was me playing Alka the other day. Oh my god. <laughs> no. That's like six in a row. I feel it. Moo. Got him caught. MSS pops the Ravage, only hits on to two. Quinn able to back away DNM. Getting chased down by Leslau, who is oh so swift. As MSS tries to back away from fear, getting clipped on in the back. And they are going to throw out that stun, which will connect in a moment here. Onto the Weaver. Chase down continues. to war. he has Maledict on him, though. Got to be careful. Over to the other side, Quinn gets picked off by DNM. So able to find a nice little catch there. With Roche getting involved in the action as well, it looks like Quincy crew are going to back out a bit. Hey, he popped his head out just to see, like, why these spooky ghosts are attacking him. <laughs> yeah, not bad. I mean, it costs you Ravage, Moonlight, but I, I think that's good. Right? Like, you, you got down to Tiny. That, that's one thing you're trying to slow down at the very least. And it'd uh, be nice if they could try and get something else onto you, War, though. Yeah. He's a hard one to catch. They're going to kill this whole wave here. Les Lau takes it down, TPs out. They're going to give up the tower. Arrow comes just a second too late. And don't look now, by the way. <laughs> this has a Necro book. Uh, that's a kind of cool build. I can't go Medallion, can't go Urn. Uh, DP stole his items, so he <laughs> just started clicking through the shop. Yeah. What's I left? I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. yeah pop Necros with uh, Tag Team going on. Start punching. And Shards catches Moo yet again. Nowhere to go. Arrow will not connect. Quincy Crew find another pickoff there. And... You know, at this 20 minute mark, it's just 5,000 gold lead all off the back of this alchemist. I guess that's one thing is that like, if you're not looking at the alchemist, the rest of the heroes are fairly even. The, the, the archer's scouting. It's on Marana. <laughs> She's not even noticing. Take that, sneaking. Here, also moving in the area. Counts out MSS. He's silenced. This is the orchid, but the silence coming from the DP as well. Soulburn will be enough to take down that tusk. Sad boy is able to get involved and actually make some stuff happen. I thought maybe with the kill on Quinn, they might try and go Roche, but I guess they they can't really with Fear's build. It's not like a Deso base build. It's Falcon into Maelstrom. Even though they have like Medallion and Gush, just uh, feels a bit too risky for them right now. I would like to see them try and take it away, though. I think if they manage to get the Aegis on the side of Quincy Crew, then they're just going to play hyper-aggressive on you. DNM could really use it to just try and recover a little bit. You know, he's he's still not really popping back into this one of these team fights. He's getting there. He's almost caught up to Lesla. Needs that quality Orchid kill as they go on another hunt with the smoke. There's a couple big heroes mid if they want to jump. Quinn has a DD bottled, but uh, obviously still very susceptible to the jump with the Orchid. And they're waiting on this high ground for somebody to come up here. We'll see if Quincy crew will oblige. I think one of the best parts about this like casual like Necro being built up and everything is just this, uh, the concept of Necro 3 is just so strong, right? For de-warding throughout the entire game. Uh, you yeah. see it as such a nuisance whenever you play versus Beastmaster or Lycan. Uh, and the boots of travel, there you go. SS, he's in there. Ravage comes out onto three. This is a good fight for Sad Boys as they're going to take down two right at the start, taking down LOA afterwards. Brilliantly set up. They did not have a good read on the positioning there. Not expecting that many heroes in the area. They kind of have vision nearby too. Uh, and perhaps they just thought Quinn was closer or something, but uh, that's like the best Ravage you're going to get at 20 minutes without a Blink Dagger. 
Yeah. Right? Like, that was just absolutely guarantees the triple kill with ease. And uh, can they rush now? Mm, probably not. Respawn timers are still too low, and it's on the opposite side of the map. Yeah. I guess that is one nice thing about the Quincy Crew style that we're seeing Sad Boys exploit, right? Is that they, Quincy Crew has tended to like want to sort of play together constantly. And if there's like three of them running up a hill together and they're, <laughs> you know, not understanding the positioning, like you said, or what have you, it's going to be good. Ravage, jump in, Avalanche, the numbers, yeah. Stun, Fear, in trouble, dead. Moo afterwards turned upon the coconut oh, the bounty, but DNM! Oh my god, that damage the acid spray! That was <laughs> devastating. <laughs> That was a 583 damage punch Tusk. That was wild. Oh, it's so much minus armor. Medallion, uh, Acid Spray. Woo. All right. Well, there you go. That's uh, the classic lineup question of how many fights does it take to do X? And they just need one fight win, and they instantly go Roche because they can just take it very quickly. They can take any objective quickly because they have Alk and DP this game. So one other thing that's a consequence of that, right? The three heroes they ran oh, in Quinn. with. He's trying to hold Moo in place here. Oh, and yeah, still a little bit of time left on this exorcism. Blink. Oh. Gets out. TP and Avalanche. Oh, he overshot him. I, I guess one other consequence of that was that it was DP and it was Tusk and it was Enchantress that died for the Ravage. So then that like opens up Roche for free. Snake King going to get the snowball onto him. Chase down is there and dead yet again. So like that, that kill ends up actually hurting sad boys i think more than it helped them well they got the the tower the, the problem was just fear got blown up with an ulting right then, then they lost the mid fight of the tower that, that's really right. what caused the issues I guess but it's true. true i mean they pushed the tier one without the ravage to be fair so that could have helped cover fear in that circumstance but there's an isolated hero it's the only kind of can have a chance at dust well, I don't know if they're actually going to get him. Fear takes another huge walrus punch, and now the snowball chasing onto him. Can't quite get there in time. The rest of the team moving into position as PPD dies yet again to Warren Leslau. Fear passes through. Uh, Dust is on cool. Now, Dust is also on Leslau, too, though. Uh, I mean, you love that, right? When all the cores are carrying detection. They're going to try and Moonlight Moo out of here. Oh, has Ravage. Cool. This is nice. They can get Leslau. And he's going to die eventually there. Well do played. Do not come into this. Yep. I don't know. Do you think Fear's going to be able to do enough damage this game? Like, he's queuing up the Scotty in X, but I'm, I'm worried about, like, just how tanky Alka's going to get. I mean, Scotty is a humongous damage dealer to Alka and DP just by, like, the nature of how they try and survive, right? Because, like, yeah. the HP regen and the, the Siphon stuff like that, so... It, it just it happens to be an extremely good game for it because he's also versus a tiny. This is definitely the right item, um, at right. least at this point. I'm not sure about all the other items, but this well, I'm just really meaning good. like, do you think he's gonna have the damage that he needs? Like, it, it feels like it's even even the best damage item is not looking like it's enough. <laughs> he just gets blown up. How could he not kill those four heroes? Yeah, that's fair. This carry's terrible. Uh, I mean, yeah, he basically needs to help just combo with the team for sure. It's not gonna be easy. They, they need the big Ravage plays. They need the magic damage. He's uh, he's not going to get to be the, the one-man show like you are. might be in a couple of these engagements. Okay. But he's got some other options available. Some uh, Perhaps some split pushing without getting caught here. Right. Uh, it feels like whatever the case is, fights might be a tough, a uh, bit tough, particularly without that Ravage. But Moo's got the Blink Dagger. Uh, and Fear is coming back up in about 10 seconds. Snake King not there with them with the Spirit Vessel, but could definitely connect if he needs to. I'm pretty sure DNM just gets one shot still by Quinn right now. I mean, it's going to be close. Like 1,200 HP. I'm over here. Under Basically just needs like the tiniest stun and he's going down. Right. Yeah, um. Solar Crest popped up from Leslie onto Yuara though, and he just hacks away that tower and they're not really going to get a good trade here. All they got is uh, snaking farming on the top lane. So once more, yeah, he is getting more farm than uh, the other supports in this game. But what is it translated Ooh. to so far? Moo with Quinn nearby. They call off the charge as Moo got further enough away. And, well, another self-stun. That's how it happens sometimes. They need this uh, Ravage into this, like, shard anchor smash uh, with the, the Weaver right-clicking, and it is going to be a lot of damage. That, that shard is crazy. Speaking of which, where's that Weaver shard at, by the way? That's, uh, that's another good one, but I guess he wants the Scotty first. Yeah. I think I've heard a couple people talk about it more as, like, a, a late-game sort of becoming an AoE type of thing, but... Yeah, yeah. 
it's definitely neat. I like that one a lot. Oh, Tom? Snaking. Silence connects, and they catch the M. Just one shot. Yeah, it's pretty bad. That's that's pretty rough. As snaking going to manage to escape. Everybody else TPs out, but DNM still just paper in this game. That is painful, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you do. You see that and you think like, <laughs> how is it tiny just picked every game? But like he needs the lane, he needs the certain like a number of squishy heroes in the enemy team to make it function and uh, that's why he's become a, a later game pick in, in most scenarios. Otherwise, you end up with a crappy position for hero. I mean, that's why he was broken before, is that he was still a good support in the same instances. But you are jumping onto Snake King. That's a long stun. Yeah, that one hurts. Moo hiding in the trees. Fear still getting chased down. They got him in their sights. Snowball, second Sakuchi, got him under control. One more punch gets the job done. I mean, yeah, part of the thing with the Quinn there, too, is he had a DD rune, but even still, like, it's just... Everywhere you go, these heroes do not have what it takes to handle the combo. It's too much. I mean, that 0.4 second walrus punch sounds like kind of a bad talent, but it, there's a reason like every Tusk gets it. It's just, it's that, I mean, that's what killed them there. They're just that little bit of extra airtime. Yeah. Devastating. Poor man, Fear, this man. This is, this is rough stuff for a Weaver player. Just so much burst and then the nuisance of the silence and like can't really get a bkb can't buy a manta so you're relying on someone to get you a lotus and that's it looks like moves get that queued up in fact right yeah that's the sort of need right there i mean moo needs so many different things right now in this game he needs all the little items but he also needs the the quality you get from the big items too and looking very tough okay, look jump here. again I mean, yeah see ya Take down snaking. Oh, silence with the BKB comes out and gonna get that stun long duration, but they're not gonna jive for it. I think that they anticipated that that was just going to be dodged. Wow. Yeah, no, no real concerns. Oh, the spider legs. Oh, Alchemist's favorite item. I learned this one the other day. I didn't know it was his favorite item, but it makes sense because guess what? That's another inventory slot. Woohoo! Yay! Goodbye, phase boots. <laughs> it looks like he wants a, a, a swift blink first anyway, so. More, more like goodbye phase boots when I get an Aegis, I suppose. Ooh, Scan fear. Pits. Mm. Oh. Bottom, though. Oh, oh, he came back out! No! <laughs> yeah. I mean, they get MSS on the other side of the map, but as soon as he tries to go for one wave, he gets killed. That's a backbreaker, man. I mean, Quinn was TPing out, and the scan had ended. He thought he TP'd away, and then he just walks up next to the lane, like, just before Quinn can't, or, uh, was gone. Go for me. Moo. Moving in. He does get the bounty room, but he's going to pay for that one, it looks like, as... Oh, wait. Do they have protection? Yeah, they got dust. Wait, no, they don't. It got anchor... Or it got a uh, crack and shell off. Nice, okay. Nice. Big save. Oh, man. They, uh... They did not find their magic moment versus the elk, you know? That, that pressuring in the jungle that we were talking about. They had one. It's like... Oh. In there, it's only other skin though. He has a BKB if he can live long enough, Ooh, but that, that was a lot of silver. avalanche toss. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he can't keep getting away with it. Oh my god, 666 is the gold mark for DNM. Sold his soul for a good tiny game. Holy hell, how <laughs> it hurts so much. <laughs> Moo, no! Get out of there! Sad boys! Living up to their mantra in this game. 19,000 gold lead for Quincy Crew. And they get, they're they just stacking up the BKBs right now. I just can't wait to see the Swift Blink. That oh, yeah. is nuts. But yeah, uh, they, they had their one moment with like, Fear went in, and he tried to stop the Alchemist, and it like, didn't work. And that, that, it's like they gave up. They're like, oh, well, I guess just can't stop out this game, guys. Yeah. I mean, Elk does kind of suck to play against, doesn't oh, it? Oh, 100%. Of course he does. It's annoying. It's like, I, I feel like people should just be banning this hero more often. Because, like, it, it, it's one of those things where it's like even just one mistake it feels like and suddenly everything can fall apart. It's kind of like how sometimes you'll see a hero in the draft, like, like a timber saw. And so then you spend five heroes to counterpick this timber saw and then his game's bad but like it wasn't worth it because then your lineup sucks 
Well, right. for Alchemist, it, it, too bad. It doesn't matter. You still need to pick five heroes to counter this guy. You need to play on his side of the river, and you just need to, like, ruin their game. Like, you make it so that Alchemist is completely non-playable. Like, you need sustain. Um, and it's not just the heroes you need. That, that's probably even, the, like, the secondary importance. The real importance is, like, itemization and just, like, general team game plan of, like, hey, we need to ward here. I need early auras here. We need an urn. We need, you know, bring salves. I don't want to go home. We need to stay in this guy's jungle. Mm. Those, those are the games that I've seen be successful versus the out player. It, it's like a full team effort. MSS taking a whole host of damage. Will end up getting that kill. DNM trying to get out of here before Quinn shows up. See if they can body him. Moo does have Ravage available. Avalanche stun comes out. Oh my god, you are so fast. The Swift Blink is devastating. Look at him! Look at him! Oh my god! He can't do anything about this. Ravage comes out, connects onto him. Yawar is still living, pops the BKB, turns on the PPD, DNM doesn't have anywhere left to go. Yawar is queuing up that stun, throws it on to the Witch Doctor as he beats him down to death. Storm gets out, but over on the other side, they're going to take down Fear to boot. Wow. Uh, that was horrific. Chasing PVD just felt a little personal there, I got to say. He got a Storm at zero mana. He's like, nah, this guy. What'd you say, my brother? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, up the high ground we go. Uh, they have AC, but the Exorcism is ending on this Glyph, so they got that going for them. And of course, there is a high ground storm, so DNM will do his best uh, oh, hi, Mo. clearing attempts, but he has no TP at the moment. Oh my god. So fast attack speed with that AC on. Still got ulti going. You are. Will he be in under kind of trouble? Doesn't have BKB for another 15 seconds, but it's like they're fine. And Quinn goes in. back in, and he kills Moo. This guy's a bully. Yeah. Oh, that was kind of risky. Yeah. He makes it work. MSS is farming with his uh, necros. Clearing out some, some wards here. Very good. I mean, this is the worst possible scenario. Now you're choked in your base, and they're getting rid of the vision that you had left on the map, too. Right. Uh, the plans all come together for MSS and his Necronomicon. I mean, yeah, and like everything this game has just felt so easy for you are. It's got, you know, 616. We have a buyback for Moo. They're anticipating a Roche fight. I mean, they were uh, correct. But yeah. won't even go there, but. I mean, they were definitely heading in. Uh, that right. buyback happened. They're like, nope. I mean, they saw them all deward and everything, but uh, they have no Ravage, so. Oh, that's a purpley mud golem. That was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Hello, Moo. You want to be my friend? Ah, get out of there, Mud Golem. So brave. He is. So majestic. For the cause. Oh, no. He's scouting. Oh, my God. The Mud Golem did his job. And now Moo is stunned. Going to buy back on Murano. Wants to get into the fight here. Turns on to the side. You are. Punches away at the PPD with that BKB. No option. Fear in trouble. He, too, is dead. No buyback on the Weaver. No buyback on the Witch Doctor. Stun. Going to chase down Snaking. You will Scepter to dodge it. That keeps him fine for the moment. But Quincy Crew <laughs> came to uh, strike <laughs> fear into them. Oh! oh here we go. Big Hi, Ravage. Man. Can they kill him? You war, he doesn't have ulti anymore. Running down Snowball save at the oh, last second. No. It's unreal. My will they be able to kill him on the way back out? Now he will eventually go down. My god. But with four dead now, they spent so much time chasing that elk that, as you said, Quinn just played cleanup in the backside of it. Mess S still chased, but now they get the silence on the DNM. Avalanche toss, snowball the boot, triple kill. They are all gone. I think it's time to type in those GGs as this one is over. I missed a patch note or something. This guy pops out when you kill the last mud goal. Mm. Yeah, the revenge here as uh, Quinn. I don't even see where he just went. Oh, he's back. He's still in front. Okay. Good GG. stuff. All right. Well, not just a good ALK game. Um, I mean, they had all three cores ahead out of the laning stage. It was looking very solid. Uh, moments like in the very beginning, first like six minutes or so um where maybe you are was uh facing some issues in lane but then he got to the jungle and they they didn't really have the heroes to go over there and stay uh perhaps the plan was like they're hoping to knock down some objectives but then you have a weaver who uh i mean they don't really have like great tower pushes unless you fully rally around ravage so it kind of felt like they were just like in the wind of the movements of quincy crew and and almost needing them to make a, a mistake or something here right
Yeah, I, I think that that's really what it felt like. And, and maybe even not necessarily a mistake, but like not even just just not bullying Storm over and over again or not bullying Fear over and over again. Like, I guess that's also you could say is part of the mistake. I, I'm just looking at the stats afterwards. Quinn killed Storm six times that game. Uh, he was just completely all over him. Dude only died nine times total. Uh, yeah. I don't know, Trent. I, I Like some, something about this tiny hero. He can really punish certain certain picks. Oh, he certainly can. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I mean, something like a TA or something where you just see enough squishy heroes and suddenly the hero just looks incredibly powerful. Uh, man, they were, they were close, you know. That, like, yeah. 15 to 20 minute was, window wasn't looking that bad because they started to, like, peek up over some of these dire heroes. But in the end, I mean, Yawar just reigned supreme and they, they didn't have any way to get him. And the burst damage, like, the way they ruined both uh, DNM and Fear's game by the, the burst damage versus Storm and Weaver, right? Like, yeah. they just don't get to play uh, Dota uh, <laughs> the way their heroes want to. Well, need to figure out a way to play some Dota that they want to play in this game. Number two, Sad Boys, a tough hill to climb. Again, this is the top team in NA right now, Quincy Crew, uh, and they're not going to get knocked out without a fight. So uh, definitely something they're going to need to go back to the playbook, go into Peter's mind, figure out what he wants to run for game number two. But for now, we're going to go a quick break. When we come back, the panel is going to break it all down, hear what they have to say in just a few. See you guys then.